Welcome to Hogs in a Card. I am so happy to have you here. I'll be sharing a quick video for an easy tutorial of a pop-up card for graduation. The card folds nice and flat on a DL-sized envelope. I made a gatefold tab to keep the card flat which is secured by this very pretty pink bow and when you untie the bow, the graduation cap pops up. So I'm going to show you how to create this very easy pop-up card. First, I have an A4 cardstock. This is a gray cardstock from Stampin' Up, but you can also create a black version of this card. I'm just going to mark it at 5 to 7 8 inches, which is the center. And then using my cutting tool, I cut the A4 cardstock into two equal parts. I'm going to start with one of the card pieces and score it at 2 inches and then 6 inches and lastly at 8 inches so that the card is divided into 3 parts with 2 inches on each end and 4 inches at the center. I just cut off the excess from my cutting tool. For the other half of the A4 card stock, I only needed 4 inches by six and a half inches so I scored along those lines off cam I cut off the excess first so that it's easier to show you where you need to score this piece start at half inch then two and a half inches you'll notice that the last end is a perfect square that is two by two inches in size now you need to find the center and mark that too do not score just leave a mark at four and a half inches. I'll flip it on the other side and do that as well. I'm using my cutting tool to make the next score lines because it is difficult to create this from a scoreboard. The line from my cutting tool makes it easier to align the points that need to meet to create the diagonal score lines that will create the pop-up mechanism for this card. The points that you need to make meet are the one half mark and the four and a half mark on opposite sides. So do that for both sides and you will create an X. Now it's time to reinforce the score lines. Fold along the diagonal lines and reinforce the folds and then make the center lines meet in the middle to create a triangular shape. Now, I'm using your bone folder or any tool, reinforce those folds and that creates the mechanism for your pop-up card. At the top side of the card piece, I mark the center, which is at two inches. Then using a ruler and a pencil, I'm going to create diagonal lines to make the corner of the previous diagonal score lines to the center mark I just made. I do that for both sides and then using my scissors, I cut along these pencil lines that creates the diamond shape of the graduation cap. I know it sounds very complex and I'm actually struggling to describe the process to you, but hopefully by watching this video, it is easier to understand the steps to create this pop-up mechanism. And now we have the cap part finished. Going back to the other half piece of the A4 cardstock, I just reinforced those score lines and you will notice that we have actually created a gatefold card. This part of the card will form the graduation gown. I will now attach the graduation cap into the gown. I will put liquid glue on the half inch tab bottom part of the graduation cap. This needs to align perfectly with the top edge of the other card piece. I decided to cut the sides a bit so that it doesn't affect the gates when they fold. You can use double-sided tape to attach the pieces together, but I prefer a liquid glue because it gives me that wiggle room to align the lines perfectly. And now our card is almost done. We just need to decorate it. I 
I am creating the tassel from a DNC thread, but you can also use a ready-made tassel if you have one. I just grabbed a scrap cardstock that I think matches the length that I want my tassel to be and then wrapped the thread around it several times until I was satisfied with the thickness that I want my tassel to have. And then I will ease the threads out of the cardstock and try to keep them in place as I cut off the ends only on one side. Then I grabbed another longer piece of same DNC thread. The longer thread is folded in the middle so that there's a loop. Then I will insert this loop into the shorter bundle of DNC thread. Now I will insert the other end of the longer thread and then pull it to lock the knot and keep the bundle in place. Finally, with another shorter thread, I will tie the bundle up at the top part to finish the tassel. For the front of the gown, I needed two pieces of cardstocks in different colors. I'm using white and pink. The pieces are the same size as one of the gates. I will use a ruler and a pencil to make diagonal lines from one corner to the opposite corner. I am doing the same for the pink cardstock as well. Off cam, I used my scissors to cut along the lines to create four triangular pieces. I'm going to stack these pieces together, so white on top of the pink. But I will leave about half an inch of the pink out so that the tops of the white and pink triangles don't match. I will do the same for the other side, but make sure they are in mirror of each other. I place them side by side as I glue the white pieces to make sure they are perfectly symmetrical. Then I just cut off the excess white parts. Now I will be attaching them at the front of each gate. Again, I like to place the two gates together before I glue them, before I glue the triangles, so that they are aligned and symmetrical. Don't worry if the triangles don't match the top of the gray cardstock because you can just trim these excess pieces off after. When I opened the gatefold, there were excess pieces sticking out at the top, so I just cut them off with scissors. Now I'm going to attach my tassel. I added a bit of liquid glue and just eyeballed the center of the diamond cap piece. I also checked if my tassel is the perfect length I want before I went ahead and glued the thread. Then with a piece of tiny circle cardstock that I had die cut beforehand, I secured the tassel in place and cut off the excess thread off camera. Now I am attaching the year 2024 at the bottom of the graduation gown. I start from the middle just so I could adjust the spacing of the numbers better this way. 
You can use a ruler to make sure the numbers align, but I kind of just ballparked it this time. Lastly, I attached a white piece of cardstock inside to write your personal message. The cardstock is about an 8 inch smaller on each side so that it fits perfectly at the center of the card. Because I was feeling a bit extra, I decided to add a gate fold tab with a pink bowl which helps the card flatten out outside of its envelope. Basically, it's just scored at the same measurements that the gatefold card is. I just attached a double-sided tape along the center at the back and then I taped down the pink ribbon to it. I made sure the ribbon was long enough on both ends so that we could make a bow once it's attached to the card. If your ribbon is fraying at the ends, you can burn them lightly and that will seal the ends of it. And that's it, the card is done. Hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching.